me the steers and handles it very nicely. I'm, Welcome to an episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You like trucks? We got tr we got trucks today. We got real trucks. We got one that appears to be a '66 Chevy and one that appears to be a '72 Chevy truck, um, which they kind of are. Well, that's what this is all about. There's a company up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, named uh, Artec Fabrications. They totally go through these. This is like the hot thing right now: resto mod trucks, and it doesn't get more much more resto mod than these two. Let's meet uh, Randall Robertson. He's the owner. How are you? Good. You own, uh, owner and president of Artec Fabrication family I, business? Yes, it is. Okay, got the kids and everybody involved? Uh, well, no, not the kids. They, oh. they, we have families working there, but okay. not, not our own. <laughs> oh, okay, gotcha. Just my wife and I. Okay, okay, but that's a family-oriented business. Oh, definitely. Yeah, okay, yeah. very cool. So, all right, let's start out with what we have here. This appears to be a 66 Chevy, correct? It was. It was, okay. So what have you done here? We start with just a regular cab. Right. Um, and basically, we cut them in half. Right. We stretch them out, bolt them down to our jigs. And this one's a prototype, so the jig was made off of this one. Right. And then we basically manufacture everything in between uh, so essentially, I guess we're kind of a limo company. Really? We stretch them. So now, what is the wheelbase? Because I don't. Did any Chevy truck ever leave the factory the wheelbase this long? Uh, not unless it was a, fa a flatbed. Oh, okay. And that's yeah. what this was. Uh, it started as one. The, okay. the, the frame did. The frame did. Okay. Yeah. So. And what is the wheelbase? It's 175 inches. <laughs> wow. So that's, that's yeah. Not an economy car parking type of vehicle. No. Okay. So you add the rear cab section here. Do you manufacture that, or where do you get it? Uh, well, each one's handmade. Right. So, um, yes, we manufacture them. I, I'm set up in a way that we'll build multiples at a time. Gotcha. Um, you know, we'll start by building five cabs. Right. They're all ordered. People right. have ordered these. And we do, we do our work in groups. So we'll do, a, a, you know, five cabs. We'll do, you know, the rockers. And we'll, right. you know, we'll do the rockers on every one of them. Then we start building the roof on every one of them. Then we go back and we do all the doors. So, so tell me how this works. Do I come to you with a donor vehicle? Do I come in and say, I want a truck, you find me? What, what is the process? Most people just, they contact us via email, um, very seldom by phone. Usually right. it's email initially. Right. right. And, um, you know, really we start by discussing what you want, you know, what kind of, what, what it's going to be used for. Um, I get a great deal of information from them and then I'll go and design it for them. Okay. Um, every single truck that we build is designed for their specific purpose. It's not that they won't do other things, but I make sure that it'll do those things. Right. Now so. this originally the 66 sort of had the big six cylinder Chevy in it, or maybe even the V8, right? Yeah, I, I'd say, well, the, the truck that this cab in front end came from was a six cylinder. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, most of the ones that, that I get don't even have motors in them. So, you know, we, we try to get the ones that are already derelict. Gotcha, so, gotcha, okay. Now what motor is in this one? This one has our signature series, 550 horsepower, 5.9 Cummins. Cummins, oh, that's so, the Cummins diesel? Yeah. Okay, yeah. now do you, do you hear from the Chevy guys, hey, there's no Chevy engine in this thing. Right? Yes, I do, I get it a lot. Oh, it um, sounds like, see, I can see yeah, you get it a lot. I really yeah, do. Yeah. Uh, you know, my, my comeback to that is, yeah. there's a couple. First off, um, the Cummins is an American-made motor. The Duramax is a Japanese motor. Ooh, so yeah. neat. Um, you know, the other thing is, is, uh, and the Duramax is going to be the only other alternative for a Chevy in most people's eyes. Right. And we actually have, well, one of these that we're building that's identical to this, a little bit longer because we have a Texas Longhorn version, gotcha. but it's getting a Duramax in it. Now, so. when when you go with the Cummins diesel, is it a brand new Cummins diesel? Is it a, a donated from another truck and then you go yeah. through the motor, uh, how do you do it? I buy up um, as many of the uh, drivetrains as I can, um, mostly from Dodges, mm -hmm. you know, because they pretty much already came equipped. Right. Uh, we disassemble everything, everything's inspected, and then we go through and we do a, a really high-end rebuild. Okay. You know, uh, fortunately on the Cummins, 
a lot of the parts are actually original Cummins parts because they don't need to be upgraded. Right. You know, okay. now when you get up to 1500 horsepower, then you have to do some different things. And what performance modifications have you done to this? This one, uh, our signature series 550 horsepower gets a cam. Um, uh, it's a, basically an RV cam, you know, a little bit more lift. The head bolt, it gets head studs instead of the head bolts that are in it. Okay. Um, the, the head, we, we basically go through and put heavier valve springs. Um, I like to port and polish them. On a diesel, that's not necessary. Right. But in my head, it is. You know, it's just cleaner. Let's take a look under the hood and see what you got here. You bet. I, I can't really, can't really say anything. Okay. All right. Who's, who's turbocharger is that? Uh, that is a BD okay. supercharger. Oh, or supercharger. Turbo, no, okay. it's turbocharger. Oh, turbocharger, yeah. yeah. Okay. This turbocharger, unlike most trucks, doesn't have a air-to-air -air intercooler. Uh, pretty much on all of our uh, truck, especially the 50 series, because the, the intercooler won't fit in the front. Right. So um, we go with a liquid-to-air intercooler. Right. And with that, we can actually control the temperature of the motor in the winter time, whereas air to air, you can't control right, that temperature, gotcha. it's just cold. So well, It gets cold up in Idaho. Mm, yes, it does. Okay, um, so, very nice. So, yeah. Now this piece looks like a custom piece. It is. Um, it's got a little bit of style here. Just yeah, I, I, and I wanted to style it a little bit. I didn't want yeah. it to look just, you know, I wanted it to somehow flow with the, with the, the gotcha. truck itself, the body style. So, and it, and it technically does help cool. And what do we have here? This looks like a fuel filler cap. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is something we started doing on this truck. And this is where you actually fill it up, fill the tank up, the, the diesel. Really? But the tank is in the back. Yes, it is. 60 gallons. Okay, so you probably get another five gallons. Just uh, yes, yes, you do. <laughs> okay, all right. Wow, 60 gallons. So you can pretty much drive quite a ways with that. Can't yeah, I, I drove, that one has a 60 gallon tank in it also. I drove it from Fort Worth all the way to Vegas without having to stop for fuel. I did have to stop, but it wasn't for fuel. How many, how, how many miles is that? <laughs> oh, geez, I'm, uh, I'm not sure. 550, 600? I think it's more like 800. Wow, yeah. okay. All right. So, wow, okay. Uh, you know, the Cummins comes with a, a fan that's, uh, you know, clutch fan that's on the motor. Right. We, we do away with all uh, clutch fan, you know, we go to electric, so again, we can control the temperature at all gotcha. times. Okay. So, okay. So the clutch fan shuts off over 40 miles an hour and that type of thing. Okay, yeah. gotcha. And you've upgraded modern yeah, yeah, uh, uh, braking. And what, what, what do we have for brakes? Uh, front disc brakes. The, the brakes are basically the same spec mm -hmm. as a Chevy Dana 60. Right. Although um, I've upgraded the rotors, we have them uh, drilled and slotted. Uh, but other than that, the configuration is the same as a stock Chevrolet, so that you can actually go out and buy parts at a, any parts house uh, anywhere in the country if you have brake problems. Okay, and you add the four-wheel drive, correct? On this we have to because right. uh, the, the, the C30, and that's what chassis this is built on, didn't come as a four-wheel drive. Right, okay, so, that's what I and thought. When we do make our modification to four-wheel drive, We've never been accused of underbuilding anything, so yeah. it is very stout. And I love the color. This looks like original 66 color to me. It is. A, a color combination, the white and the blue. And, yeah. and this Chevrolet only? That is a, um, uh, a set of one. Oh, um, okay. The gentleman that gave this to me is a really good friend of mine. He's an icon in the uh, Chevy business, or oh. the, the C10 world. Right. And um, yeah, he, he loves the truck so much, um, he said, hey, here you go. Oh, very cool. So, All right, very nice. Uh, let's see what else. I guess we can we can shut that. Uh, okay. Shut that. See if I can out. reach it. I can't imagine parallel parking this. This is it seems to be. Well, easy. yes, it takes a couple couple shots. But obviously, power steering and booster brakes and all that. Everything. Correct? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Air conditioning as well. Very good air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's. What does this weigh? Do you know? 8,300 pounds wow. okay. full of fuel. 8,300 pounds, okay. Yeah. And that's a substantial chassis. I'm guessing that chassis is 4,500 pounds. It's a one-ton frame. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. yeah. Drum, it, drums in the back? Uh, yes. Okay. I prefer drums for a tow vehicle. Yeah, why is that? Uh, more contact surface. Yeah. Um, you know, the, you'll, you'll notice that most of the big trucks, semis and stuff, they still use drum brakes and there's a reason for it there is more contact 
surface. Right, so, I got you. Okay. Yeah. Well, very cool. I mean, obviously the chrome work is all very nice and modern lights, modern... Uh, you know, these LED lights are something that I just, uh, this is the first truck that I've ever put these on. I've never liked LED lights on a classic truck. Yeah. Because all the funny looking silly lights and everything that are associated with it. But these actually, to me, look so good on a classic. Uh, and yet, I mean, they're, you can actually see going down the road, right. which is really important. So now every truck that we build gets a set of these. Okay. Now this has normally been chrome in the yeah. 66, but you've yeah. done it in the, the silver, which well, is very nice. They were available in chrome, white, or silver. Okay. And I didn't want too much bling on the front of this. Gotcha. And you got the double wheels in the back. Uh, yeah, the dual wheels. And how many speed transmission? Uh, the, it's a five speed. Five it's an NV4500 okay. um, five speed. Okay. It can take that power out of the human. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. the only manual transmission that we put behind a uh, okay. Cummins. All right, and let's go to this one now. This was, it appears to be a 72, am I a close, what? Yeah, um, it actually started as a uh, 69, 70, mm -hmm. um, but because I wanted to actually change the door panels to the 72, because it only was one year for that, that door panel, um, I decided just to go ahead and make it a 72. Oh, all right, <laughs> so okay. At that stage of the game, you can do that. Okay, and you've added these little turbo diesel. Yeah, yeah, okay. uh, a little touch there. Very nice. Basically the same motor as this one? Yeah, this is more of a, a, a just a stock version. We're just about to strap in a thousand horsepower twin turbo into this. Really? Literally when we get back to the shop. Okay. This one's actually going to be revamped, different suspension, okay. different steering. Oh, they both have, oh, they both got the moonroof deal, right? So you pretty much put every option available on these. Yeah, you know, most of the bells and whistles that we're used to these days and the new things, we're new trucks, uh, we can provide them. Yeah, know. well, so you get the classic look with, mm -hmm. uh, with the upgrade. Yeah. Okay, I'm not, I'm not even sure how you get in this thing. You know, uh, well, there these, you go. Look uh, at that. these running boards, yeah. uh, they were a necessity because yeah. I, I didn't really think that this truck was going to be this big when I started out, yeah. but it just ended up that way. Um, I couldn't get in it. I literally <laughs> had to crawl in it, and yeah. I'm not really into that. So, okay. um, most of the trucks that we build need something like this. So that's another option that we put on our trucks. And you've got it's four wheel drive on the fly, so you can go to two wheel drive, yeah. correct? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that would you do normal road use, just save gas and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. I, I can't imagine this thing needing to be put in four-wheel drive very often uh -huh. because it gets so much traction already. Yeah, I would think, yeah, okay. Uh, actually, it's six-wheel drive, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love the interior. The interior looks, that center console, uh, they didn't have that in 66. No, they didn't. That was um, something I thought up, uh, you know, I wanted to do something a little unique, but not, you know, strange. So I walked up to one of my best fabricators. I explained to him what I wanted, right. and I explained to him how I wanted it done. And I pointed to a hood, and I, I said, I want you to make that whole thing out of that hood. Right. So it's actually made from one of these hoods. Oh, yeah, all right. So, so it's steel, not yes. even aluminum. Oh, no, it's, it's steel. So wow. Okay. I, yeah, I, I've never really been, like I said, accused of uh, underdoing anything. So it's, it's, it's a heavy truck. So these probably run what about 250? Something yeah, like that? yeah. They they start for uh, you know about 150, but really that's a, such a base truck. Most of the people that order these trucks, um, they want a, a, a beautiful classic like this with all the bells and whistles. Right, so right. So those generally start around 200 and go on up to. But I imagine somebody like uh, the regular guy who wants to have a truck with the power. A lot of times when you buy these supercars, they sell you the fitted luggage and all the extra things you don't really need. Mm -hmm. You can you can you can just get the mechanical upgrades, can't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. So you build whatever you want. Very nice. Okay. <laughs> these are literally um, hand tailored to the customer. Uh, each one is uniquely different. I, I mean, this must be quite a shock to Chevy guys, because first of all, this never existed in nature <laughs> at any point with this cab, yeah. the four, especially the four door. And it's the longest wheelbase I've ever seen, uh, so it must it must get all the looks at, at the shows and things. Eh? Well, um, this weekend we came down here for a uh, Chevy only truck show. Right. It's GM only, and it's right. um, you know 650 Chevy or GM trucks, mm -hmm. um, classics, um, and you know we won the whole thing. Oh, that's great. Uh, the neat thing is, and, and it's with this truck also, but anytime we take our trucks. Um, to a show, 
I love watching people walk over with such a approving grin. Yeah. You know, they're so, it's like, yeah. Oh, you, oh, you cool. get this one. Yeah, my uncle had one of those, bought oh, a new God, one in 66, just <laughs> like that. You know, yeah, I got, you know, like I have my stupid tank car over there. You say the big yeah, tank yeah. engine. And every car goes, yeah, my cousin bought one of those back in the day. It was really, yeah, I'll bet oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, 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 hilarious. It's very funny. Here's more rope. A lot of experts, <laughs> yeah, funny. a lot of experts. Well, very cool. Now, can we drive? This one seems like it'd be the most fun to drive. Can we yeah, take this one out? Yeah, we can take this okay. for a drive. All right, and it's a manual five-speed. Oh. All right, let me get a step ladder and we'll uh, we'll give this a shot. <laughs> All righty. Out of boys. Fourteen hundred foot pounds. That's the turbo I hear whistling. Yeah. It's got some power in it. Yeah. Yeah. It pulls very nicely, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. No matter how big a load and how many people it got in, it still pulls exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really believe it for what I designed this truck for. I don't really think it needs any more. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, we can build them with more torque and more horsepower, yeah. but for this, I'm good. You know, put a little itty bitty boost gauge right next to the um, oh, I see. wipers there. Boy, that is, that's, Just, a, that's an eye test, isn't it? Uh, it is. I, I, I wanted, didn't really want you know, gauges everywhere, so yeah, yeah. trying to keep it original looking. This one is my personal truck, so. Oh, this is your personal truck. Yes, it is. This is the prototype. Right, and right. I always get the prototypes. <laughs> so, I, you know, this one's, yeah, I've done a lot of stuff that a lot of our customers probably wouldn't want us to, uh, wouldn't want to pay for. Was this Chevrolet? Yep. Yep. It was a um, an option back then. Well, yeah, air conditioning trucks is pretty rare back in the day. Yeah, well, you know. Because you think of air conditioning back in the day was usually. <laughs> Roll it down. 25% <laughs> of the price of the vehicle. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if a oh, car, yeah. if a car yeah, was three thousand dollars, air conditioning was a six hundred dollar option. Yeah, that's a lot of money. This is, uh, uh, you know, standard equipment on all of our trucks. We put the aftermarket air system in them. Yeah. Um, they that work. vintage air you use? This is actually old air. Oh, okay. Yeah. Traffic, that's for sure. Yeah. You do have another gear. I know, I know. You got so much torque. You got the AM radio, huh? Yeah, you know, uh, it, that's actually the uh, Bluetooth. It's the aftermarket. Right, right. It looks like it. You know, so we got all the bells and whistles, and I have a, a hidden satellite system. This has a gooseneck hitch in the back of it. Yeah. Um, I've designed a uh, gooseneck hitch that literally is the shape of a gooseneck. Yeah. And then, um, you know, you're specific here. And then um, I'm going to tow a vintage race car of some sort behind it to the shows. I haven't decided whether I'm going to do a sprint car or a dragster. Oh, okay. Of that, of the yeah, know, 60, yeah. four, five, sixes. You're going to build one or just buy the race car? Oh, no, I'll build it. That's most of the fun of its building, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I remember when I was a kid uh, going to Lions Motor Speedway. Oh, sure. Um, and, and that's what they were racing back then is the, uh, you know, the, well, 1960, late 60s. That's yeah. what they were running. They're bulletproof. Yeah, um, pull them in and forget them. Yeah. Um, Not much to adjust to tune. 
No, and really it's all in the fuel. Um, the valve train is so strong. Yeah. Really the only, thing, like I said, I do like to port and polish them just because I like I like them to be clean. But um, the valves, really pretty much all you have to do to the head, and then you use stock pistons. So the folks at Chevrolet seen this? Well, I, I'm sure they have. Yeah. Um, probably kicking themselves for it, but you know, uh, um, I like to think that they that they like the work I've done. When I build these trucks, I really do try to convince people I like it to look like GM made it. Right, right. You know, and, and when I can achieve that, I've, I've definitely. Is, is this something you take to SEMA? Yeah, this will go to SEMA this year. Oh, good. good. Yeah. Now, if somebody wants them with a gas engine. Will you build that? Sure. Yeah. We offer. Um, We've got a, a, really anything LS. Yeah. Uh, not too many people want the original motors that came in these things no. for obvious reasons. Most of them are the Cummins. We've got a couple Duramaxes. We have a supercharged uh, 427 we're building for a uh, 50 series Suburban. Oh, is that right? Okay. Yeah. But this is definitely the most popular motor. Yeah. They get pretty good mileage, too, don't they? Yeah, they really do. What is your rear end ratio? Do you know? Yeah, it's a 410. Front and rear, it is a locker in the back. Don't really have anything in the front. It's just, I just don't think we need it, you know, for what we're doing. It has the uh, Dana 70 rear axle, you know, dual rear axle, and the Dana 60 dual front axle. I like to put the 205 uh, transfer case in just about everything we build. Um, they're just indestructible. Yeah. We usually have to do some adaptation depending on the drive frame. Yeah. But it, it, it guarantees that we have something that's going to be reliable. I mean, the steers and handles it very nicely. I'm, uh, you'd think you're just in a regular truck, you wouldn't know you're in a yeah. 172 yeah. inch wheelbase. <laughs> yeah, and our 50 series trucks, you know, the Duke, same thing. Well, you're the first person ever driven this other than myself, and I got to tell you, you guys are very nicely. Well, you're doing well. I <laughs> that was like a stick. Yeah. Do you like to do automatics or stick? Uh, personally, no. Um, some of our clients do ask us for um, an automatic, and because of the horsepower that we, you know, we put into these things, we end up having to build high-performance um, automatics. Right. Usually, it's going to be like a, um, a 47R8, you know, which is the non-electric right. shifting, um, or a Duramax. Or, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, Allison. Yeah. So. Allison's are good, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they're good. They're uh, they're big. That's what I got in the tank. Right. Well, it's a double overdrive. Yeah, but even the um, Allison, we have to build it. Um, you know, it's a it's a very durable transmission already. Yeah. But when you're when you're putting 1,400 foot pounds of torque out the motor, it's um, yeah. It's a little tough on them. <laughs> it's kind of fun to have the vintage feel with the modern power. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, uh, having the modern comforts, too. Is that a brand nice. new windshield, too? Oh, yeah. These the original seat rails and everything, too? You know, in 1966, the buddy bucket was available um, on up to 68 in the Chevy trucks. Yeah. So this is an actual original buddy bucket that we reupholstered. Okay. The back bench is an original bench that we've taken all the springs out of and put the metal, the flat metal in and made all of the foam. Oh, okay. So these are very comfortable. Uh, looks classic, but still comfortable. But clutch and very progressive, very nice. No, no chattering, no... And you're moving what, 8,800 pounds? Uh, 8,300. 8,300. Yeah, pounds. with a full tank. Yeah, a fuel tank with 60 gallons of fuel. Yeah. And, what is that? A six, little bit of weight. Six pounds a gallon, right? Yeah. Well, Randall, thanks. This has been something different. You know, you get a little tired of supercars all the time, so yeah, you know. it's fun to have super trucks. And you know, it's you. amazing the the interest in these is huge. It I think is. You're gonna get a ton of. Uh, interested people going to your website and checking it out. And that's what this, that's what this, uh, this YouTube show is all about, you know? Everybody knows where Ford and Chevy and Lamborghini are, but 
Sometimes you're looking for the guy just doing something a little bit different. They got their own shop and working with friends and family to build vehicles like this one at a time. So, Randall, thank you, man. Good job. You bet. You bet. Proud of you. Nice work. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>